I want to speak for a few moments on breakthrough. Would you just look at somebody tonight and tell them breakthrough? Yeah, I don't care how rough it's been. I don't care how difficult it's been. I have a feeling tonight that somebody's going to get a breakthrough. Well, people of God, I believe that this is a season when we must look beyond our circumstances. This is a season that we must look beyond our storms and break through to new spiritual territories. Now, we know from the word of God that Peter was a man much like you and I. And he was a man who had human weaknesses, but he also had human strengths. He was bold at times, then at other times he was fearful. At times he was full of doubt, while at other times he seemed to have great faith. The inconsistency of Peter stands out here, but there is a message that we need to deal with tonight. Because this is a very interesting story that we have before us because Peter and the disciples were in a boat at sea that was being tossed to and fro by a storm. The Bible lets us know as Peter watched, Peter saw somebody walking on the water. He didn't recognize who it was at first, but he saw somebody walking on the water. And even though it was an amazing sight, seeing somebody walk on the water, Peter spoke with great faith when he heard that voice say, be not afraid. That's when Peter said, Jesus, is that you? If that is you on the water, bid me come and I will walk on the water. Peter knew that if it wasn't a ghost, if this was really Jesus, then he too could believe that with God all things are possible. Well, when Jesus said, come, Peter, Peter stepped out of the boat and he walked on the water towards Jesus. I mean, he was doing the right thing. He was walking towards Jesus. But look what happens. Here comes inconsistency. That spirit of inconsistency arose in Peter's heart. And look what he does now. He looks away from Jesus and focuses in on the wind blowing and fear took him over. And you know what happened. He began to sink in the sea because his ability to stay on top of the water was gone quickly as he took his eye off Jesus and looked at the storm around him. I'm here to tell somebody tonight, this is, the way, this is the way that the devil works. He wants you to focus in on your storm instead of focusing in on him. Now, how big can a storm be when you've got Jesus right there? I mean, how foolish can you be, Peter, when Jesus is right there and all you got to do is look at Jesus and you're going to turn around and look at a storm? But how many times does the devil play with our minds this way? He makes us face and he makes us look at storms instead of looking at Jesus. And only when Peter cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus had to tell him now, you know what your problem is. It was your doubt and it was your fear. His lack of faith caused him to lose the supernatural power to walk on top of the water. 
Listen, people of God, God, God meant for Peter to enter into a spiritual, a new spiritual territory until he looked at his circumstances around him. He had the victory, but he looked at his circumstances around him. But it was that fear that had him bound. Even today, people of God, we have not yet begun to enter into all that God has prepared for us. Hear me good. God did not want Peter to limit what he desired to that day. And God does not want us to limit what we desire today in your life either. I'm here to tell you, he wants you to look beyond your own situation. He wants you to look beyond your own storm. He wants you to look beyond your own circumstance and stretch and increase your faith to new levels of spiritual growth. I'm clear on my assignment. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It doesn't matter where I go. My assignment is to stretch your faith. To let you know that you can have what God says you can have. Ah, oh, sometimes we're so focused in on recession and everything else that we forget about the power of God. But I may have some witnesses here tonight. He's still the same yesterday. He's the same today and he's the same forever. And I've come tonight as a spiritual trainer to tell you what you got to do. You got to exercise your faith. You got to tell the devil, I don't care what time it is. A recession doesn't control my life. The world of God controls my life I can participate in the recession or I can participate in God's word I choose to participate in God's word where his word says and my God shall supply all my, I don't care what time it is. I don't care what season it is. And I come to prophesy in this place tonight that this is your season for your breakthrough. I dare you to high five somebody. Tell them breakthrough, breakthrough. Don't you look at your storm now. Don't you look at your situation. Don't you look at your problem. Season, it's, it's a season for your for your breakthrough. Now sit on a moment because I want you to understand this. Now please remember, breaking through to a new spiritual level will not be easy. Whether you were going into or entering into a new territory of faith where you believe God to meet your needs or a new spiritual territory of allowing any of the gifts of the spirit to flow through you, the devil tries to scare you when you go to something new. That's where fear, uh, fear comes in because it's unknown to me. God, you you telling me to do this, but Lord, I can't do that because, because my job won't allow me to do that or my environment won't allow me to do that. If God says do it, I don't care who you are, where you come from, you tell the devil to back off because I'm going where God wants me to go and what he wants me to do. For many in the body of Christ, it is easier and more comfortable to remain right where you are. Rather than advance into new areas of spiritual growth. You see, the devil knows that once you enter into a new area of spiritual growth, then you will be responsible to bear new spiritual fruit. He's trying to stop the manifestation of your new fruit. I'm talking about he's about to take you to some places that you have never been before until people will begin to look at you and say, what happened to him? What, what, what happened to her? 
look, I, I, I see something different about you. You see, the devil don't like that. The devil wants you to remain down. The devil wants you to remain depressed. The devil wants to, you to remain sad. But I come against the enemy tonight and I speak it in your life because this is the season that you got to get out of the boat. You're going to have to get out of the boat. If God gives me permission to get out of the boat, I'm going to get out of the boat and I am going to walk on the water. Now you got to know when you get out of the boat, everybody don't want you to get out of the boat. Can, can you see, can you see the warfare here? What is spiritual warfare? Spiritual warfare is the spirit is in competition with the mind. And the mind is in competition with the spirit. Now here's Jesus saying, come on, Peter. And then you got some disciples in the boat talking about, don't be no fool now, Peter. Now you, you ain't Jesus. You know you ain't Jesus. Now don't get out there and make a fool of yourself. You better sit down somewhere. You got a zeal and it ain't according to knowledge. You better sit down somewhere. Sit down in the boat. There was spiritual warfare going on. But I could hear Peter say, y'all shut up because if that's Jesus out there, I am getting ready to have a breakthrough out of this boat that's full of a storm and we're about to go down. I'm a breakthrough even if I have to walk on the water. See, I know some, some of you, you're waiting for your breakthrough. You, you got you to gotta have some shallow ground or you got to make sure the ground is solid. But sometimes God is saying, no, no, no. You're going to come out where I am. You're going to come out. You're going to get out of the boat and you're going to walk on the water. And what he's basically telling you that this is the season that you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone. And that is difficult to do sometime because there's areas where you feel comfortable. I just got to this point in my life where I feel comfortable and then here comes God. He pushes you out and says, come on, if you want your breakthrough, come on, walk on the water. That's why I'm coming against tonight boat mentality. Boat mentality is dangerous when you are just satisfied to sit in the boat. And I come to tell you tonight, your life was not designed to sit in the boat. I believe that I have come to this holy convocation to minister to some water walker. Maybe I better check the house. Are there any water walkers in the house? I I'm talking about when folk call you crazy. When folk call you foolish and you're able to say, you might as well shut up because I'm getting out of the boat and I'm going to walk on the water because my blessing is out on the water. It's a season. It's, it's a season where you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone for your, your breakthrough. Sit down and I'm, a, I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. I, I, I know I, I ain't got to spend all night for you to get this. You, you, you're going to get this. See, the devil knows that once you get to this level, there is no limit to how far you can go. The only limitations that you will have are the limitations you put on yourself August 29th just passed August 29th just passed that's when Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans Louisiana six years ago the devil tried to mess with my mind the devil tried to tell me you know you had some good days you ought to be glad about that in all them good years, about 30 good years you had and you were successful. Sit down in the boat. Enjoy the rest of your life. You paid your dues. People understand you were in a hurricane. You ain't got to do nothing else. 
devil was trying to tell me now, you can, you're getting older now. That, that, in 2005, I was 55. How are you going to start all over again at 55 years old? Oh, if I was in my 20s, my 30s, my 40s, no problem. But now, 55 years old. But I heard a voice out on the water saying, if you trust me, 